I would say that the best class in Blood Hunt is probably the Yo. So I wanted to make a quick video just going through some of the archetypes and factions in Blood Hunt. Um, if you're new to the game or whatever, this be for you to figure out which ones you like to play, which sort of play styles suit, suit each one best. And, uh, you know, I'll go through them a little bit. If you're a more like advanced player, more competitive player, play quite a lot of it, then you'll already know some of these tips. But just in case for the newer players, um, we'll go through it. And when we get into them, you will see that I actually am, I haven't played all of them, but I have watched the chariot tournaments. I've watched some of the, the kill race tournaments that have been on already. Some of the scrims that people have been playing, some of the competitive. So I kind of have a good grasp of what's like actually good to use at the minute. Um, so yeah, just, I haven't exactly played them all myself, but I played quite a lot against them and watched quite a lot. So my knowledge has come up quite a bit. But yeah, let's um let's get into it and let's just start talking about the first faction, which is the Brugia. So the Brugia has two uh, archetypes to pick from, the Brute and the Vandal. I played quite a lot of the Vandal, so I'll have quite a good bit of input on the Vandal. But we'll start with the Brute. So each archetype will come with their own uh, clan power, passive power and archetype power. And then obviously you have like the perk basically down below that you can change, which changes depending you know on the level that you are with the archetype. Um, and we'll maybe get into that in another video, but... Yeah, so the Brute. So he has a Soaring Leap, which is the clan power for both. So the Bruja has that on both the Brute and the Vandal. You basically can form a really big jump up in the air, super high, and then you come down and you can slam, basically. Um, it's quite useful for like movement mechanics and also getting away from, from fights. If you get pushed by someone with melee or shotguns right now, really good to just jump up and get away. Um, really nice, 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 uh, nice ability there. True Grit. Um, you replenish half your health while you're not taking damage. Um, it's kind of a weird one the way it works when you combine it with uh, sanguine um yeah you, you replenish your health there's not really too much more to say to it where you're not taking damage um the bigger one that you have with the brutes though is that you have this shockwave unleashes a shockwave capable of deflect deflecting bullets so you do you put out like a, a barrier shield essentially um and it deflects bullets and you can use that to push up on people um especially vertical if they have the vertical height on you you can use that and push up onto them now the next one is the vandal the Vandal is the one that I've played the most. He has that same jump. He has the passive where you take less damage when you are close to people, which is quite useful for staying alive. These are very much brawler type people, as it says, the reckless brawler. Um, they very much are brawlers, these two. Um, and yeah, so you get a bit of damage resistance when you're close to people. And his actual ability that he has that's unique to him is that he can do a leap, basically. And it's a little bit buggy right now, but it can be used for movement. And essentially what you do is you lunge forward um, to a certain point it's fairly close to you it's not got a massive range on it but you lunge and slam the ground so combining you know the clan power where you jump all the way up and then slamming down on someone is like a good gap closer so yeah try that out now the second faction is the nosferatu um i would say these are the more annoying ones to play against they can be very frustrating so they can basically their clan powers they can go invisible and it's really powerful. It's kind of like active camo in Halo, if you've played that before. You can't really see them all that well. You get a very like faint outline. They It goes so quick, and they you know you can kind of hear where they go. But it's such a pain to play against. It's, it's so difficult. So yeah, I mean, the Saboteur starting off, obviously, has the clan, the clan power with Vanish. His passive is that he turns semi-invisible when crouching, which is kind of strong. You know, the game moves pretty quick towards the end game. If you're crouching around, people might not see you that well. And his actual ability is the um, Sewer Bomb. Basically, you throw out a bomb, it's a gas bomb, and when people go near it or when they shoot it, it explodes. So, pretty strong. Um, but I would say that the Prowler is possibly slightly more useful. So, let's have a look at them. So, obviously, has the invisible again. The passive will be, it leaves a trail uh, for people that are hurt badly. So, again, it's one of those, it's like if you played Apex before, it's kind of, it reminds me of Bloodhound a little bit. Especially with his actual ability, which is send out bats to scout an area. So you chuck out these bats and then it sort of basically pings the area and looks at people and, and lights them up. Very similar to Bloodhound if you played Apex before. Very strong character. On to the third faction now, which is the Torador. Torador, I'm not sure how you pronounce it exactly, but these two are some of the strongest ones in game. Um, you have the Siren off the start. Basically, they both have the clan power that is the projection dash, which you can basically send out a dash forward. It goes a certain range and it stays there for around 10 to 15 seconds and then you can use it in that 10 to 15 second window and if you don't it just it, you know resets basically um the siren i believe is the less used one right now between the two this between siren and muse um the passive power is the siren's passive is kindred charm basically it's like a really useful team utility where you know civilians that you feed on you feed on them quicker and your team feeds on them quicker and they act friendly towards you you know they don't if you use abilities near them and stuff they won't get angry they won't run away or whatever or alert people to your position so it's kind of just a nice little chill passive to have and their actual ability is the Blinding Beauty. Essentially, 
you press a button and in a radius around you, if anyone's close to you, they are blinded and it's a really powerful blind. And it does about 20 damage each to them as well. So if you're getting pushed, I think this is the best option to use it. You pop that and people around you are all blinded and it can give you a quick escape if you use your projection dash as well. Onto the Muse. The Muse, again, has their projection dash. Their passive is that they regenerate faster when they're down and all their cooldowns get instantly refreshed as well when they are down. These can be quite tricky when they use the, the dash when they are down because they get up so fast, they can dash away while they are down, disappear and then get up really quick and then just, just go again, disappear. They're completely gone out of it. And their actual ability is basically a heal. It's like an AoE heal for your team. Um, I believe you are... I think you could be easily spotted or the, the audio of it is really loud. So you have to use it with caution. But it is like a, a nice little heal. Um, but if you take damage or anything like that, you get interrupted. It's, it's like a channeling ability. Now finally onto the last faction and the only solo one, solo archetype in their faction. Uh, that is the Ventru faction and it is the Enforcer archetype. Now... You probably already know what this is if you played before um, or you've seen the game before. Everyone is talking about this uh, this class basically being completely broken, and I have to agree. So, I, while I'd probably say this is the best character to play right now if, if uh, you know competitive or something like that, what I will say is that it's probably going to get nerfed pretty quickly sometime soon, and uh, nobody really likes people that play broken characters like that. Like it's it's a very frowned upon thing. So, I wouldn't recommend playing it, but just know it is very broken. So, let's go through it. So basically, they can turn invulnerable and they can be immune to damage for a certain amount of time. That is the clan power. When more of these come through in the clan, um, in their faction, I think it'll be even more broken just seeing more and more of these people. If it doesn't change the way that they are when they go invulnerable, then I don't know what it meant to do. But the duration, they last for so long, they don't take any damage, they can just get out of any fight that they're in. Um, the passability they have is that enemies nearby are slowed when they're like moving around. Um, and it you kind of get an alert when people are near you. Um, very simple passive, and it's kind of like a just more about being a pain in the arse, essentially. Again, nobody likes people that play these characters, and uh, just kind of showing you what, what they really are all about. And finally, their actual power is um, Unyielding Charge. Rush forward, dealing moderate damage and silencing enemies for a brief duration. Similar to, I think, the Scourge Blades, the way that you rush forward, sort of. Um, you go through people, and it sort of stuns them, dazes them kind of thing, and silences them. Again, a very annoying ability, combining the fact that you have a, an invulnerable thing where you can just disappear for a few seconds, basically, and not take any damage. Combining that with enemies being slowed when they are near you, and that you know they're near you because of an alert. And then they have like a, a basically a stun, basically, and a silence, and you can't use any abilities. Just overall, is a very broken character, and hopefully there's going to be some changes to that soon. Now, on a final note, what I will say is that the best class, I think, right now to actually start playing is either the Brute... Or the Siren, I would say, is the ones that people should be trying out right now. I would say that the best class in Blood Hunt is probably the Muse or the Siren. But myself personally, I'm going to be trying out the Brute and getting more practice in. And trying to get just you know get more hours onto the game. And that's, that's going to be my plan. And so yeah, that is the end of the video. Going through some of the archetypes and factions in the game. Make sure you try out the ones I suggested. You know, try out Brute, Siren or Muse. They're going to be really cool to play. I think Enforcer is going to get a bad nerf sometime soon, so don't play him. People don't like playing against him as well, and just overall make the community a bit better, not using something so broken like that. Hopefully it gets gets fixed up soon. And so yeah, make sure you leave a like on the video, let, let me know what you thought in the comments, uh, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.